This film begins with a view of Southampton's new or western docks completed in 1934, only five years before the start of World War II. Although highly classified at the time, Southampton was the US Army headquarters on D-Day and for Operation Overlord, and the film features LSTs, landing ship tanks, loading at Embarkation Hard S1 close to Dock Gate 8. The LSTs are berthed alongside the quay used today by cruise liners that visit the port. Before World War II, the deep water and small tidal range made Southampton the premier passenger port in the UK. However, the gateway to open water made Southampton vulnerable to access air attack from northern France and the town suffered greatly during the Blitz of 1939-40, so much so that the port was closed to non-essential traffic for two years. Yet, when war was declared on the US, the port became the conduit for Bolero, the movement of troops from the United States to the continent via ports in the west of the UK. The tidal range is the difference between the high and low tide. Southampton has a unique double high tide, which means there is a greater opportunity to load and unload at the dockside without the need for tenders or grappling ropes. It is for this reason, although other ports and harbours were closer to the transit camps before D-Day, troops and vehicles were funnelled along the south coast through Southampton to Normandy during Operation Overlord. It was not the Luftwaffe that postponed D-Day and very nearly halted it in its tracks. Instead, it was due to a logistical bottleneck involving the shortage of the seldom admired type of naval craft known as the landing ship tank shown in the film. At over 300 feet in length with a maximum speed of 10 knots, it was a prime target. They were also hard to navigate with a blunt bow, shallow draft and flat bottom. They thumped down jarringly on every wave. Even in relatively mild waters, the ship stank of diesel oil, backed up toilets and vomit, which induced near universal seasickness, not only among the embarked soldiers, but among the crew. However, they were capable of steaming up onto a beach, open their bow doors, deploy a short ramp and deposit wheeled or trapped vehicles directly onto the sand. The problem was that there were simply not enough of them at a critical moment in the war. Most US LSTs were constructed at so-called cornfield shipyards along the Ohio and Illinois rivers, which collectively produced an average of 24 new LSTs each month. From the start, Eisenhower knew that three divisions would not be enough to break through Hitler's Atlantic Wall. After all, he had used seven divisions to invade Sicily. He therefore directed that the plan be rewritten to accommodate a five-division sea assault plus two airborne divisions. He wrote to Army Chief George C. Marshall, while there will be enough LSTs for the first three tides, after that we will have no repeat, no LSTs reaching the beaches after the morning of D plus one until the morning of D plus four. In other words, the Allied invasion force would be stranded on the Normandy beaches for three days without the means to reinforce, resupply or evacuate. An unacceptable outcome. Allied planners postponed the date for Overlord by a month from the first week of May to the first week of June. That would provide American shipyards extra time to build as many LSTs as possible. As Eisenhower wrote again to Marshall, one extra month of landing craft production, including LSTs, would help a lot. In the end, the delays gave Eisenhower just enough LSTs to carry out Overlord, but it was a near-run thing. Of course, UK yards also built LSTs to US specifications and crews were taken from all over the country receiving their sealed orders at the Southwestern Hotel, codename HMS Shrapnel, attached to the Terminus railway station at Southampton. Initially, LSTs were tasked with landing armour such as the Sherman tanks seen in the film. But as the front line moved forward, Allied needs changed and the vessels that survived were sent back to their shipyards so that rails could be welded and rolling stock loaded which would supply the extended lines of communication on the continent.